Mason, opening day, sun and fun. We're here. We're trying to find out what's the most interesting stuff here, but let's face it, the 550 is now in the pipeline. You're delivering airplanes. Tell us where you go from here. Well, you know we're excited, Jim, to be finally uh, delivering certified aircraft. The 550 we certified on February 28th. We delivered the first one on March 12th. The second one on March 13th, and we're now five planes into our delivery process that we've delivered to end customers. And we deliver plane number six tomorrow, so we're excited about that. So we're well on our way with the deliveries, and we're going to continue to do more of the same for the rest of the year. So what's the prognosis look like for production for the rest of this year? Where does it go from here? What do you really see the future of this airplane at this point? Well, you know, you've got a lot of different risk in aviation. Obviously, we've passed through the financial risk hurdles. Then you get through the certification risk hurdles. Now we're at the production rate scenario where we're trying to rate production to the speed of the market. The markets are coming back slowly, and we just want to make sure that our production rate is in line with that. We are fortunate in that we can produce one and a half to two planes per month with our existing line all the way up to 10 planes per month with our existing line. And it's just a matter of adding additional staff and increasing supply chain. We've got a very flexible assembly process if you will. We've got a number of new entrants and potential entrants on the turboprop side of things and they're all making statements about comparing the turboprop to the jet market and this and that but the turboprops are getting pretty damned expensive. That actually puts you in kind of a catbird seat right now, doesn't it? You know, it's great. There's great choices in planes that are out there, but you're right. We're sitting right in the middle of that price point, turboprops versus a twin engine jet. But I got to tell you, our customers are a lot more comfortable on takeoff on the single engine performance. And that resonates with people. And our operating costs are just in line with the turboprops. So now that the total cost of acquisition, the total operating cost and the total value proposition are all in our favor. It's really hard to ignore the phenomenal safety record of an Eclipse or a twin engine jet. There's never been an injury or a fatality in an Eclipse aircraft. Knock on wood, we've got over 250,000 flight hours on the fleet. We have 260 some of these planes flying now. And I attribute that to a phenomenal design of the aircraft. It was designed as a single pilot jet from the beginning, where every other jet has been a twin pilot and where you're gonna consolidate down to a single pilot type rating. So I think that's a big advantage in the design of the plane. The training program, we're uncompromising. Getting type certified in the aircraft is very, very important. But when you add together twin engine safety, jet performance, great training program, all those things are adding up to a great safe experience for our customers. It doesn't hurt that your vendors have been stepping up. You've been able to run a pretty steady program and on top of that, keep upgrading the capabilities of the airplane within those criteria as you've gone along and stay with the same vendors. We have a supplier certification program now. We have 146 certified suppliers to this aircraft. They do a phenomenal job. They understand us, they understand our needs, and they understand our customers' needs. So supply chain's good and strong, customer base is good and strong, and those are the two very important components for us. Well, in the field, we've heard just nothing but incredible praise for Pratt. And uh, IS and S, and is, especially as they go along, is just continuing to get serious thumbs up. Pratt is a great partner. They've done a fantastic job with us. We really appreciate them so much. We've got one of the most efficient power plants in aviation, and we're really proud to have that on our plane. IS and S has been very good as well, too. You know, this the panel that we have from IS and S is not only in this aircraft, but you'll also find it in the retrofits for the C-130 aircraft, 757 and Delta now has put it on their MD-88 retrofit program. So we're flying good commercial quality avionics in this Eclipse jet in the GA world, and that's pretty cool. What can be improved? What might be improved? What are people asking for? And, and where do you take Eclipse as a company? We're going to continue to produce the plane. We're going to continue to improve the plane. We're going to look at additional aircraft. We're not going to remain a single product company, but for so long, we know that we'll grow past those things. So we're looking at a lot of different things. And we're going to continue to bring more efficiency into the aviation world. Not only efficiency in flying, efficiency in manufacturing, and efficiency in the way that we bring safety to the world of aviation flying. What's it take to get a 550? So we've got three different types of products that we're offering to our customers now. We have the 550 that we price at $2.9 million. That's a new 
factory new aircraft, three year tip to tail warranty, uh, all the bells and whistles, those kinds of things. Uh, good quality product there and a lot of people want to buy new. We also still have a couple more of our total eclipses, one or two left. They're about priced in the 2.1 price point. And then we have a, a good number of planes that come and go in our used fleet as well too, around a million and a half because we take trade-ins and they're, Normally the trade-ins sell before we could deliver the plane to the end customer, so uh, which is pretty cool. So they come and go pretty fast. How upgradable are those airplanes at this stage? All of the planes in our fleet are upgradable. We came out with an upgrade to our IFMS aircraft called the Eclipse 500 Plus, and we can take many of the components of the 550 and upgrade them into the current aircraft. And you're seeing something that we're pretty proud of, and we think imitation is one of the greatest forms of flattery. And what we see now is OEM manufacturing are now becoming MRO facilities as well too. I'm wondering where they got that idea from. Well, we wish you the best of luck. I've always been a big fan of the airplane. It's a little airplane that could. I uh, had to struggle here and there, but right now it's certainly rocking the world of, what's it, 260 pilots at this point, or owners I should say, and uh, the reports that we get continue to be very positive. Over 500 pilots are flying the Eclipse jet now. Over 260 owners own the Eclipse jet, and it's only going to keep growing from there. So we really appreciate you guys following us. Aero TV is brought to you by. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com.